they're four to eight years old. They have their best brains at eight to nine. <laughs> and, uh, right? And then after that, their feet become a little smaller. So you've been working on a horse for, uh, well, you just started. It's a six-year-old horse, and two years down the road, the neighbor or the owner says, well, when you started here, it took two. Now it's only taken one. So what'd you do to my horse? Well, it's a fact of life. They get hardening of arteries. The feet get smaller as they mature. They become more upright. So back to the horse. What can we do to help this horse out? Does it need help? Yes. One, is it a mature horse? Yeah. Yeah. So what do you want to do for a mature horse? Maintain. Stay out of his way. Stay out of his way because he knows best. <laughs> But if you wanted to do something for him, you might go with half rounds or something on the front, depending on the environment. Maybe soften the concussion if the horse is on hard ground. We don't know what's going on. I'm sure it's just a part of maturity and a part of the way this horse goes. There's nothing really obvious. Could we get some more information right now that might help us out? What did we not do? We didn't ask him what his job was. We didn't ask him anything about his history. They you know he's probably got all kinds of information. There's something else we didn't do. Well, we don't do that, but we could ask for it, right? But there's something else we didn't do. We did not. We didn't watch how he walked or do a circle or anything like that. And sometimes that helps out, doesn't it? So if you don't mind. When you're putting your horse's foot on a hoof stand, bring it out in the natural range of motion. We tend to get way out here and they won't stand. Or on a horse that has flexural issues, like navicular problems, they don't like to bring it way out or real high. On those horses, when you realize the uh, resistance, bring it up here, lower your stand, and work on it there with them flexed. Life will be a lot easier for you. Another thing you have to consider is, I have a plow horse, that plow horse has worked at a walk. Three to four mile an hour all the time. He's never going to extend that much, it's gonna be short strided because of what he does. Every time I trim him, I'll be taking more off of the heels. You have a horse that's reaching out, running around, doing things, they're going to stride out a little more. It'll be a different wear pattern. So that, that bruising in the toe, could that be caused from, it looks like he's walking dish kind of in his face by every time? Could be that, it's pulling a little bit there all the time. And that would be medial toe quarter mostly, right? Because of the way it goes. Are we going to change the way he's going? No. Is he dominant left or right front? Left, left, left front. front. His stride length is not as long on the right front? Right. No, because all atrophy here. What could cause that? Less weight bearing. Yeah, yeah. Or an old injury or trauma. Do you know what a Sweeney is? You have the scapula here and there's a ridge on the scapula and the infraspinatus and supraspinatus nerve go over that. And uh, they'll get pinched sometimes, going through a door, laying down, falling, getting kicked or something like that, and that'll atrophy the muscles in there. I'm not saying he has that, but that's one reason, one thing that happens there. Uh, and, they and they stride shorter when right. that happens. Right, and sometimes they'll just drag the leg, depending on how severe it is. It could be the way he stood when he was a foal. It yeah. could be all kinds of things. We don't know what it was. That's why that horse stays back right now, right? Yeah, it's going to be back further than the other one. The knees are, you know, the point of the knee is off. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably grazes like that. It could be he's always grazed like that. And then this, you see this in line of dish foot, the cramp is in Right, there's stresses. What can we do to alleviate some of that stress? Do what? Trim. Well, we're going to trim more than we did? No. Roll the toe. Roll the toe. Or rock or the toe with the, the rasp, right? If he's going barefoot. Yeah. 
Where are we gonna rock her the time? So when I pick up the foot, I'm gonna keep it in natural range of motion. Then I'm gonna take my rasp and go towards the ground. Round up those sharp edges. That's his pointer breakover. That's where we want to allow him to break over. You just set the foot down there. I can take a little bit more off of this corner. So there we go, we have a uniform tissue texture there, it's not that far down. Again, I don't want to be carving a lot on there. My best tool for trimming this foot is a wire brush on the solar surface. I'll clean out my collateral sulcus. And then, how are the heels? It looks like this heel could come back a little further, right? But otherwise, yeah, we have a little thicker hook wall over here in the toe quarter. When we look at it on the floor or on the ground, it looks like there's a greater length than the so medial toe quarter. Your rotation is going that way. Yeah. Looks like a left hind foot. Can we rock her a hind foot? If you want to. Yeah. See the thickness of the wall there? Let's be frank when they tell us if we don't shoe that. We don't shoe it? I'm not saying we don't fit that. That bowl is not something we feel Yeah. Mike. Yep, so if I take and build up the inside heel, is that going to help him? As far as the toe, it's tall. Yeah. But then when they come across, some of the force plate studies that I've read yeah. will show when the force moves across and goes through the stride phase, and you've got a bit more increased pressure at the heel, the lateral heel, right. and then move forward and push off the medial toe. Yeah. So there's some theories out there. Smarter to fit the inside toe, okay. not cheat that inside right. toe to try to, yeah. yeah, you fit the lateral toe a little bit to make sure you don't cheat the inside toe to allow to use that toe. I'm just curious. This yeah, well, we need uniform stress to the cells, right? So, in order to get that, we need a uniform thickness of hoof wall. And we're trying to make the stresses to that hoof as even as possible, even though our horse has deviations. Right? The horse has deviations. Because of those rotational deviations, this horse is landing lateral heel, and then probably spins a little bit, goes over a lateral toe, or, or lateral toe, yeah. And so the inside flares, goes to the inside, it gets thicker. Does it flare as much as it wears a little bit to the outside? It does both, doesn't it? Right. right. So it's wearing more laterally. So why wouldn't we give a more lateral toe port? I don't know.